Hello, it's Jeanette with GeoAmazing Paper Crafts. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm back with another video tutorial. And today I'm going to show you how I put together this little tea light candle holder. It's in a hexagon shape. See how cute? And it holds five tea light candles. But not the regular size candles. The, the regular size tea lights are about this tall. Okay? But I have the shallow ones that they're probably about maybe two-thirds as tall as the regular ones and that's why I'm able to fit five of them in my little uh, my little hexagon box here and I like these smaller ones because I can use some of the Stampin' Up! washi tape and this is the one of the washi tape designs that comes from the um, I think it's the second collection the second pack there's four all together and this one has the uh, Trinkle Tide is the name of the color that's on here, and that's the color that's on, on the designer series paper that I'm going to be using. But all I do is I just take the washi tape, if and when I find the beginning of it, here it is, okay, and I just do this, just wrap it around. So simple to do. Just want to get it on there straight. See how easy this is? Okay, let me get my my paper snips and I will just snip that off. And I've got the other four and I'm going to put all of these aside. I already wrapped those to save me some time. Now all this takes is just a piece of designer series paper or cardstock that measures five and a half by five and a half inch square. Now this one, uh, this paper that I'm going to be using today is from the Delightful Daisy uh, DSP stack or pack. And this one here with the little speckles on there, this is from the, wait, I'll get it, <laughs> Painted with Love. And that designer series uh, pack can be found in the Occasions. 2018 catalog. Okay, isn't that cute? It's got really pretty little speckles on it in all different colors. Um, and that is, the inside there is like rich razzleberry. That's what I wrapped it in with the, um, the washi tape. Okay, let's get started now. Now, if you have a pattern, let's say you have hearts or something, uh, what you want to do is you want to be careful how you score this. <clears throat> so I'm going to bring in my Simply Scored Scoring Tool. And I'm going to score this every seven eighths of an inch. So it's seven eighths of an inch. Okay. And then we're going to go one and three quarters of an inch. Okay. One and three quarters. Okay. And then we're going two and five eighths of an inch. Now I'm using the bigger ball on here on the stylus because if I use the smaller one as hard as I press, I could rip the paper. <laughs> okay, the next one is three and a half. Okay. And then the next one is four and three eighths. And then the last one is five and a quarter, which will leave you one quarter of an inch of an edge. That that's where you're going to put your adhesive. Now. If you've got a pattern, you got to make sure you turn it clockwise here because you want this part to be your bottom. And that is, you're going to score this at one and a quarter inch. And then you're going to score the second one at three and three quarters of an inch. Okay. And this is your top part. Okay. And we're all done scoring. Now we're going to fold and burnish, but I want to let you know that you're not going to burnish this top line here. This is the top of your paper. Don't burnish this. And the reason why is because I want to have that little dome that kind of curves. And if you burnish it, it's a little bit too harsh right here. And it doesn't make that real pretty dome. Okay? So we're just going to burnish the bottom part. Let me grab my bone folder. 
and we're going to do all of these horizontal lines. No, those aren't horizontal. That's the horizontal line. We're going to do all of the vertical lines too. I'm just as confused with my lefts and my rights. <laughs> okay. Okay, now we have all of these all burnished except for that one top line there. Okay, now we're going to take off this uh, little square, or actually this little rectangle here. We're just going to cut it, cut it off. Okay, and I like to cut it off with that score line too. Okay, and now you have this. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and add, and put my adhesive on it. And what I'm going to be using is tear and tape. And you might be wondering why I'm not cutting those yet. Well, I don't really want to cut them until I absolutely have to because it makes it easier for me to work with it while it's still all one piece of paper and not so many slits in it. Okay, so I'm just putting tear and tape here. I'm trying to get it as close to the fold on that last fold as possible without going over. Okay, let me put it down. This can be a little tricky, but just try to do the best you can. And there is going to be some that hang over the top, the edge, the, the edge of this, not the top of it, the edge of it. Okay. And I always cut because when I tear, I tend to tear my paper. So when I take this off, this top layer off, you see I have some that's uh, going over the edge. And what I do is I just kind of with my thumb just kind of tuck it over, just fold it over so that none of it's on the edge that's hanging off the edge here. Okay, and now let's just go ahead and put this together as neatly and straight as possible. There we go. So now we have this. Okay, it's a little hexagon. And now I need to go ahead and punch the slender windows in there. You see these windows here. And for that, I'm going to be using the classic label punch. But I need some kind of a template to make sure that I'm punching it in the right place. So I'm going to get some black cardstock, and I'm just going to go ahead and punch. I think I might punch a couple of them just just to be on the safe side in case I I, um, I punch in the wrong spot. Let me put this over there. Okay, now I'm going to... Oh, I, I still need this. What am I doing? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, removable adhesive on here. Okay, and I'm going to put a couple of coats on here um, because I want this to come on and off. Now, I have this, and there's three panels. One, two, three on one side, and three panels, of course, on the other side. You see that? So I want to get this right in the center in between this, the score lines as and as centered as I can so me holding it like this kind of makes me see it a little better and I can see whether I'm even okay that looks pretty good okay so I'm gonna press that down in there I'm gonna grab my punch And I'm going to line this punch up. Now take your time and make sure you've got this lined up really good so that you're not uh, punching your template. There we go. Okay, that's one. And you're going to need to, of course, do this three times because each time you're cutting out two windows doing it this way. And now let me get my piece here. If I can pull this apart... And that's it right there. Okay, now I'm going to fold it this way. And now that I have a little bit of a reference of where where I need to be, move it over just a bit. I still kind of hold it up like this. See if I'm in the middle. Oh, that's a little crooked. Just bear with me here. I'll get it. Okay, now I'm going to make sure that it's done really well. Grab my punch. Line up the template on the punch. And I, I, I slightly squeeze the punch. 
but not hard enough where I can't move the paper. There it is. Just so that I have it right where I need it to be. There we go. There's another one, and I just need to do one more. Let me take this off if I can. Here we go. Now I'm going to add just a little bit more adhesive to this. Because as I'm pulling these off, I'm, I'm pulling off some of the adhesive too. <clears throat> I've got one more to do right in the center here. Okay. And try to do it as do it as straight as you can and as centered as you can. And if it's not perfect, don't worry. It doesn't have to be too perfect. It's not machine made, it's handmade, right? Okay, pressing that down, grabbing my punch. And now, oops. I think I've got it now. All right, and now I've got all of my windows for this little box. All right, let's put that away. We're going to be using that again for our tag. Now, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to grab another punch. <laughs> and this is my envelope punch board. <laughs> okay, because now I want to make the little corners, the little uh, curved corners there so that I can make this little tie right here. Okay, and so I'm going to put I'm going to just fold it like it is right here with the three panels on each side and I'm going to uh, place this at the one and one eighth. Now the one is actually one inch from the middle of this punch, okay? But I want it to go just a little bit further to the one and one eighth. And then I'm going to punch and I'm going to just keep folding and putting this up to the one and one eighth. Okay. And fold again, one and one eighth. Okay. Keep going till you have it all. I'm moving some of this aside here. I don't want it to get bogged down on the back. There we go. And a little hard because I'm punching through more than just those two layers. Okay, and now the next thing you want to do is take each one of these and you want to fold. You see this right here? You want to give it a fold and that's what's going to make that little star design. See this little star? Six point star? That's what you're going to do to make that six point star design. Okay. I'm folding each one of these little panels, just fold it in half. And now the reason I didn't score it is because um, that middle point here would be a sixteenth of an inch and my scoreboard only scores in increments of one eighth of an inch. So that's why I did not, I was not able to score it. Although I probably could have scored it with my um, my stamp and trimmer, but then that would have been another measurement I would have to keep track of. Okay, do you see the little star that it made, that it makes when you score it, when you fold those little panels? Okay, now, before I cut this up, I'm actually going to make the tag. See this little tag here? And again, I'm going to be needing my punch, but I'm going to go ahead and stamp it first. And I'm going to be stamping with the Tranquil Tide. And I put the Tranquil Tide in an uninked spot. I just inked this up, the small one here. Okay, if you notice, I, I have this label that I put on here after I printed the label off. And then I stamped the color in full strength and then stamping it off. So that kind of gives me a little color guide. And not only that, um, the label was long enough for me to fold in on the edges here so that it makes it just a little tighter of a close because they're a little bit loose when you get them, which I didn't care for too much. But now that I've got the labels on them, um, I could 
um, hold it upside down and that lid is not going to come off and my ink is going to stay wet in there. Alright, now let's use this stamp here, which is the For You stamp coming from the Vertical Greetings. You see how pretty all these little stamps are vertically? I love this stamp set for, for just this kind of a tag. So let's ink it up. I've got this, uh, this stamp on Block G from our acrylic block collection. Block G. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp it. Well, let me do this again because I kind of pressed too hard and got ink. So you got ink on the sides here. Yuck. Okay. That's why I have ink all over my hands. All right. Let's do this again. Very good. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and punch it out. And I'm going to leave a little room at the top so that I could punch a hole. I'm going to poke a hole, rather. <clears throat> I didn't realize that I was going to have this uh, tag. Well, let me just get this other tag off of here. This is what we have here. Okay, and the back is clean. So we'll just toss this one because I really don't want that one. Okay, so I have this one, and what I did was I, I took my uh, stampin' pad, my, um, this little spongy stamp pad, and I took my my pick, my, um, uh, this is what you call a, oh, I'll have it on the screen. <laughs> right now, right now I can't remember my name. <laughs> yes, I do. I'm Jeanette with Geo Amazing Paper Crafts. Okay, now, I what I want to do is I want to put the tag on there first. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab some silver string. Uh, and I know Stampin' Up! sells silver thread. It's really thin thread. They have it in different colors like gold, silver, uh, black, and copper. But I don't have it in the silver, so I'm just going to use some silver string here. And what I'm going to use to thread that little tiny hole that I just made with my um, with my pick tool I'm going to go ahead and put the ends of this little bead wire in here I use this as my needle threader sort of and I'm going to go ahead and thread this in here okay like that and I'm going to pull it through and I'm going to have that and take this out and have that loop where I'm going to stick the ends inside the loop so that I can make my tag. How does that look? All right, and now I'm going to find the front. I don't want it to be on the back, so this would be the front panel right here. So I am just going to go ahead and take this little tag that I just made. I'm going to take the right strand here and put it through one put it through two of these holes. And then just make a little knot. Cuz I don't want this to come off. I'm going to tie it twice. Okay, and it's once, and we'll just tie it one more time and trim off the ends. Okay, just a simple knot. It's not rocket surgery. <laughs> okay. There we go. Now, now I'm going to go ahead and make the slits on the bottom part. Okay. If I hadn't done, if I if I did that before, I I would be having to fuss with all of these little flaps, and I just don't like doing that. So let's go ahead and make all these little slits, and you're cutting up to the score line, like this. Okay. And there we go. And now, this is my front right here. So I am going to fold back the back parts of them right here. Okay? And you, I have these three flaps in the front. And what I'm going to do with these three flaps in the front, it just put a little piece of tear and tape all across the top edge of these three flaps. And then I'm going to cut them apart. 
It's just easier for me to do it that way. I know, I'm a little weird. I just cut these these little slits, but now I'm just going to cut them apart again. And now I'm going to take each one of these apart, I mean each one of these little uh, application papers off of here, the little backer paper. Okay, and now it's time to put these together. I'm just going to take this one here, this one that's got the tape on it, and let me fold those back for now. And now I'm going to take the opposite side flap, and I'm going to just very, very loosely line it up. Make sure that the edges meet. I'm going to line it up, but it's going to be very loose, okay? You don't want to press it down because you don't want to um, you know make it permanent and if you're off it's never it's never going to be right so I'm going to take this next one and press that one down like that just very gently and then this last one here this is that front flap we're going to press that down and line these up the best we can okay we got them all lined up okay and now if you if you're worried about any flaps coming up on the inside you can stick a glue dot um, under here if you want. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my my uh, my pick. I'm going to take a glue dot, and I'm going to just lift this up with my scissors here. You can lift it up with tweezers if you want. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that glue dot right down there, so that flap, that one top flap, will stay down. And you can only you just do it if that bothers you, okay? Now let's fill this up with our candles. Okay. There we go. See, they fit perfectly in there. I mean perfectly. Okay. And there's another one. There goes my phone. Okay, and now it's time to put the ribbon on here. And I just have some silver ribbon. Um, this is the one, uh, I think it's the one quarter inch silver ribbon. And, or it could be three eighths. I have to look at the package. <laughs> uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and make my bow. I like to kind of make it backwards, like I'm tying my shoe. And just tie it gently, okay, so that you still have a little bit of a dome on there. And make your bow as neatly as you can and this isn't my favorite thing to do making bows especially on camera but we're gonna just go ahead and do our best up oh, that's not our best <laughs> okay here's the bow trying again here okay and I'll make it nice and pretty for the picture okay <laughs> But you get the picture. And here we are. Okay, so anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. And I hope that you'll try this. Uh, if you need any tools or supplies, please go to www.geoamazingpapercrafts.stampinup.net. And once again, this is Jeanette with Geoamazing Papercrafts. And you make it a great day. Bye-bye.